name's Summer. I currently live in Orlando, Florida, but I'm from California, Southern California. Um, we're actually moving back there next month. I've played soccer basically my entire life. The last two years have been a little off for me. I kind of took a break, but that's typically what I'm doing. <laughs> my mom's a fitness instructor, um, has been for 40 years now. So I kind of was born and raised in the gym. Um, so that's really what got me into fitness and then um, soccer. Growing up and being around all that, do you think that kind of helped you know, shape your... I guess, kind of how you see training and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, hugely. Um, I mean, even just lifestyle wise, like um, I've always been raised on like much healthier food. And so like when people see how I cook and stuff, they're like, how would you learn that? I'm like, to me, it's second nature. Uh, but the same thing with training. I mean, my mom was literally in labor with me walking on the treadmill. <laughs> So, and I was like in daycare two weeks after I was born. So, I mean, that whole aspect of like being in the gym, it never felt like somewhere that I was like, oh, I have to go there. It always felt like home. So doing training like that outside of just playing um, and the dedication, it just kind of came naturally because it was just, that was second nature to me. I didn't really know any different, you know, sitting at home, playing video games or things like that wasn't something I was really ever doing because I just wasn't part of my life, I guess. Gotcha. And as far as like soccer goes, is soccer something you chose more? Or is it something like family did? So you kind of hopped into the same thing. Where did, you know, why specifically was it soccer? So that was actually a really long process. Not really long, but basically my parents wanted to put me into some type of activity when I was little. Um, I have an older sister and she, we're polar opposites. She is very into dance and yoga and like much more feminine things. I'm like sports, like let's go. And so it took a few years for them to figure out what was my thing. We tried dance, we tried gymnastics. Um, and then one day, one of my mom's uh, friends, her husband was coaching like a little rec soccer team. And she was like, why don't you ever come out? My first day there training, my parents knew, like it was just, it was like I was born to play this sport. Like it was instant. I didn't need any introduction. You just put me with a soccer ball and I won. Um, that was when I was five. Has soccer always been the only thing you did or did you mix it up with other sports along the way? I did mix in some other sports, especially when I was little because at that time soccer had an off season. Um, so the first sport I mixed it with was softball. That was fun until it wasn't fun. <laughs> I played that honestly for probably, I think it was, I don't know, five, seven years, something like that. Um, and I couldn't ever play like all stars, I had to play rec. So I hit a certain point where like, even though it was on my sport, my athletic ability was just beyond that. So I got tired of it. Uh, then I tried lacrosse, fun, but it's not a physical sport compared to soccer. So I was getting fouls called on me like every second and I was pissed off. So that only lasted two years. Um, and then once I was in high school, soccer kind of became year round. So from then on, I only did that, um, except my senior year, I did um, a year of track. Um, I, I had been recruited for like years by the track team and I was like no I don't like running and then for some reason my senior year I fell in love with running like conditioning at soccer and everything I just really enjoyed it so I was like yeah sure I'll go out and I ended up going to state <laughs> so it's oh. cool do you feel like that having those different sports somehow helped you with soccer or just kind of switch you know switch up of the pace helped or anything like that I would say so. I, I think the biggest thing I gained from at least the ones when I was younger, um, I gained, I think, even more appreciation for soccer because I, I like any sport, but playing a sport that, you know, was with people that either, um, I guess most of it was really just less like aggressive people. Like most girls that are doing a sport that are aggressive are going to go into like soccer 
or um, I don't know, some crazy like wrestling or something. But like soccer to me is like one of the most aggressive sports. So the main thing I noticed was like when I was on these playing these different sports, I always was like, I have to be the tough one. So like I broke my thumb playing softball at practice, like broke it and nobody would have known. I like bit my tongue as like, I'm not crying, finished practice and then had to go get it casted. I was like that kind of, it made me be, I think tougher because I had to like prove myself in a weird way. I don't know. <laughs> I think from the outside looking in, a lot of people don't see soccer though as like that physical sport it's very interesting to hear you say like how physical it actually is and then how physical like you are and how it did translate to the other sports from like level to level though do you feel like that soccer got more or kind of got less uh less physical I would definitely say more physical I mean I, I what's funny is like I've always argued with people over the years that don't play soccer especially guys that are like oh you know it's not that physical and I think men's professional soccer gives it a bad rep because they're flopping and everyone sees that. But I know women's soccer in particular. So I guess there was a study for concussions because um, I've had a lot. I've had, I don't know if I should say it on here. <laughs> I've had like 10. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be playing anymore technically, but, um, but I take care of it. Um, but I guess women's soccer is like literally like the tiniest notch below uh, football. A couple reasons women's skulls are thinner and like less hard. Um, so there's less protection, but also, you know, we have no gear, we have no helmets and there's a lot of like head to head or like ball to head and stuff like that. Um, so like that is, has become like a really big thing in the sport, but when it comes to like physical contact is pretty gnarly. I've broken a lot of bones, ribs, my nose a few times, ankles, um, and I think as the years went on, it definitely gets more physical because people are bigger, they're more aggressive, you know, there's more, usually there's higher stakes on the line and thing like, things like that. Um, so I definitely think it gets more aggressive. Um, I don't think there's as many like silly fouls, I guess, like when you're little, like you're just kind of kicking. And so you get like a lot of those, but I think when you get older, like most of the, like aggressive contact is on purpose. Like nobody's sliding and taking someone's ankles out on accident or kicking them in the face on accident. Like everything is like, I gotta prove, like stay away from me kind of. Yeah. Um, and then I think kind of the word you're looking for, I wasn't sure until you said it, but I, I guess like the, uh, we call it like the, like the technical side of it, all yeah. the like skills and the dribbling. Um, obviously that improves immensely and what's funny is like you'll see players that play very different games so like some people are very technical they're dribbling by people they try to avoid the contact and then there's the other players that want to go head first into every tackle and what's funny is when I was getting recruited for college I actually the first college I went to my freshman year Seattle University when they were like recruiting me and stuff, they said it's funny, um, cause I'm small, I'm five foot two. So I'm not like some big person out there. <laughs> but they said, um, most people that are your size are like very technical and crafty and they don't want the contact, but they're like, we notice you and like, we see you like get your shoulder and they're like, you're ready for it. <laughs> it's funny, it just depends on the players. Cause you'll see different things across the whole field. Do you feel like you use, um kind of that physical nature as the chance for you to like earn that respect yeah no I I could definitely agree with that I mean I I know I'm just naturally a fairly aggressive person <laughs> like in that regard um but I definitely think that's a part of it either to like especially there have been times where I've had defenders on me and they're like a foot taller than me easily like it's some mountain and my greatest strength is my speed. Um, but if it comes down to like hitting them and like bodying them and anything, I definitely think it's like, it's a mix of respect. And then there's other times where it's kind of sending a message. Like there have been times where I'll just run full speed through a player, even though I know I'm not gonna get to the ball first, but then it, they go down and either it's 
one less player to worry about. <laughs> or it just like tells the team like, oh, she's not messing around just because she's small. Like she's going to take you out basically. You mentioned like all the different injuries you've had. How, how does that play an impact on your career? Are those some things that have kept you out for long periods of time or are they just kind of like, you know, getting back into it after a few weeks? I'm not the best about staying out when I'm injured. All of college, I didn't miss a single game, even though I had concussions, tears, muscle pulls, broken nose, whatever. Um, it was kind of like, I'll just wrap it up for this game and then rehab it when I can. My most, my last injury. So I, I played after I graduated in 2019, I went to Finland and played a season of pro or like part of a season of pro there. Um, and my last game there, I tore my hamstring by far the most painful injury I've had, like broken ankles, torn ankles. I tore my ankle when I was there too. That I, that I kept playing with that, but that I couldn't, I don't, it was so painful. So I had to fly home and everything. But other than that, like my broken ankles kept me out for, you know, four to six weeks, stuff like that. But I've had no, luckily, knock on wood, um, no big tears that have kept me out for like a year um, or anything like that. It's all been broken bones or minor tears and have you ever considered like backing off of that like aggressiveness for your body's sake or is it just like okay this is how I play and you know what happens will happen I've definitely I think the main thing I've backed off with is in regards to like heading the ball um after all the concussions like at really any little like jolt to my head is kind of like off-putting so I think the main thing I've kind of stayed away from is headers for the most part, unless it's like, this is going to score a really important goal or something. Otherwise, I'll kind of back off or try and get the second ball. In regards to like aggressiveness, I'd say I don't think it's really changed anything because um, I feel like typically when I get hurt is when I'm not being as aggressive. So like when I'm being the aggressor, I'm less likely to get hurt. But since my tear, not because of it, I haven't been on a pro team with COVID and everything. Um, so I'm looking to get back into it. But these two years off have really killed my endurance <laughs> and my fitness. But like in regards to my strength, I put so much time in at the gym. So like a few weeks ago, I played in like a little scrimmage and I could feel how much stronger I was against players and stuff. And I think that has made a big difference and hopefully in the years to come will help with injuries and things like that. Does it, does it almost feel weird though, to have like, you know, go into like a training period and, and not have any soreness or like any, any broken things or, you know, anything like that? I mean, yeah. What's funny is I miss it. I mean, I get sore from like the gym and stuff, but I want to be like, I miss coming out of a game where we where we won or like I gave my everything and I've got like huge bruises and cuts on my legs and I feel like I got hit by a train like I miss it because that was like it just it was rewarding in a way it sounds really like sadistic <laughs> but like I love that and so like when I played in the game I barely had a mark because I was just so out of shape I couldn't fully keep up how I used to but even just like the feeling from that was, it was a good memory. <laughs> and do you feel like over these last couple of years of, of not being able to play and be where you want to be with it, has it kind of like reinstilled that fire? Or did it ever kind of leave you or, or, you know, how does, how does that motivation change when you just know that you can't play? That was a difficult thing. I've had, it'll almost be 19 years of playing. So there was definitely a period of time, especially in college, where I was kind of burnt out. I wanted to just, I didn't want to stop playing, but I wanted to have like a week off or something like that. But college is just so constant. There were times where I wanted to just like purposely sprain my ankle so I could just like take a break. <laughs> but I was supposed to go play in Spain 
September of 2020. And the offer was still there, but with COVID and everything, I was like, I'd rather not go and get stuck somewhere. And then I ended up meeting my now husband and we got married. So I kind of, for once, took a break from this like soccer part of my life and actually focused on my personal life, which I've always kind of put on the back burner. So there were definitely like some pros to that, but as like the year, years and uh, went on, like I just felt like there was something missing. Like I tried to, I tried to get into bodybuilding. That's what my husband does. Um, I tried to get into different things and just nothing, nothing was soccer. So it just felt like I had this hole in like everything. And, you know, now in California, they're having, they have a San Diego and LA pro team now. And this year I'm not going to try out because I know I'm not where I need to be. But my hope is to train and try out next year because I realize like, I, I just need that. Like I miss it so much and I don't feel like I'm done playing. So I feel like it definitely reignited a little fire. Like I feel motivated to just do skills and training on my own that I wouldn't normally do because it's all I have right now. I started training like a lot with my husband. So it was a lot of lifts that I didn't normally do. So whenever I worked out, even if I was just weight training, it was always high intensity, go, 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 go. And with him, you know, he's trying to grow. So it's a lot of weight, rest. And I started training with him and I noticed a huge change in my body. I've never bulked before and I didn't do it on purpose initially <laughs> got a little too you know you know when you start a relationship and you eat a little too much <laughs> but it actually did it helped a lot in putting on muscle that I haven't been able to before because I've never given my body enough to add weight it's always just kind of been maintenance so even though i I really took a break from like everything soccer related. I barely ran, I barely touched the ball. So it it kind of let that stuff rest. And now that I'm getting back into it, I feel all the little like um, stabilizer muscles that haven't been worked on lately. But the new base that I created from it has made a big difference. How have you kind of seen women's soccer just develop in, in especially in America in the last 10, 20 years? I feel like I was kind of the age where it grew with us. So, I mean, I grew up in Southern California, which is probably the hot spot for, especially for women's soccer. I mean, just in like the little county or two counties that I was part of, we had, I don't even know how many teams. You could probably find 50 teams in a 50 mile radius. But I feel like when I entered is kind of when it was starting. And I mean, over the years, there have been so many changes, especially when you get up to like semi-pro and professional for women's leagues have come and gone and didn't work out. And I feel like now it, in, even in the last few years, probably since I was in college, it really kind of hit a point where it was stable. It was steady and people were showing up. And I remember... I think I was in college or right before I went to one of the professional games and the stadium was like kind of full, but like not really. And now if you go to the games, especially some of the teams, like the stadium's packed, it's become something really cool. And I, I look forward to all of it reflecting in like salaries and stuff, because I know they're trying to bump it up. And I understand, of course, you know, it depends on how much, you know, they're bringing in versus men or other sports. But like when I was in Finland, I got a thousand a month, thousand euros a month. So yes, they like covered my housing, but you know, that's not really, you're basically paying for food and you have a little bit extra. I think when that can get high enough where these professional athletes that dedicate their life to a sport don't have to get, you know, a second job that they don't want, I think when it can get to that point where they can genuinely just be athletes full time, I think that's when it'll really hit a next level. But it's it's grown like crazy. Other countries are starting to catch up because like when you think of other countries, you'd think like they're big in soccer, but they there's been like a sexism thing in other countries that's shown up where like 
you know, men play soccer. And so women's soccer in some of these other countries isn't quite catching up the way it is here because this is really like a, one of the biggest female sports here. It's so crazy how much, like it's almost really hard unless you're just like deep into that world to keep up with all of the leagues and all of the levels and, and, so, and that kind of thing. There's so much of it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's become a lot. I still struggle to keep up with it all because they're always adding and then some leagues disappear and then teams will change from this league to this league or change names. And I'm like, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> is that something that you always kind of saw yourself doing or is it like a, along the way? Was it, was it almost just like, oh, this is kind of, I guess, what I'm doing? It was so I played my first year a soccer when I was five I played rec and then after that I went to competitive and when I can ask like anybody that knew me <laughs> when I was six years old I always said I will play pro soccer I never said like I want to or I hope to I was always like no I'm gonna do it eventually I'll get there and I'm gonna do it and my soccer journey was probably one of the most difficult obstacle filled soccer journeys I've heard of and I know a ton of soccer players most of it was due to my size um but not because of me it was because of my coaches I went from team to team coach to coach uh club to club because for some reason I would go to these teams and I would work my I don't know if I'm am I allowed to cuss on here <laughs> yeah I work my ass off <laughs> And I would, I would prove myself. I would score goals. I'd get assists. And I would stay at a club for two years. First year was always great. And for some reason, the second year, the coach, the coaches, nothing would change. They would just decide like, no, you're too small. No, you're not strong enough. And it didn't matter what I did. And I had coaches for years tell me, you'll never play pro. You won't even play D1 college. Um, and that was basically my entire soccer career. I had, I think, two coaches in all of that um, that actually believed in me, but it was always the coaches that were coaching lower levels. And so it didn't feel as like they, you know, they didn't have as much of a say in what I was doing. That was kind of my journey. And I didn't even think about college until it was time to commit. Um, I was always thinking pro, I'm just gonna play pro. And then it came time for college and um, I committed to Seattle University because I wanted to leave California and I wanted to go to a private school, like a small school. And that's school I ended up going to. And first half of the season was great. And then for some weird reason, they started me, I played like almost the entire game and then nothing changed and all of a sudden halfway through season they benched me like almost the whole game and I would ask them you know what do I need to work on what am I not doing enough of and every time it was no no you're good you're good just keep doing what you're doing but it wasn't getting me playing time and so that's why I ended up transferring to University of San Diego for my last three years um but yeah, it's just always been my whole soccer journey. I knew I had my eyes on the prize, but it felt like everybody was like, no, that's not happening. No. So I feel like there were pros and cons to that. You know, like the pros were, it, it made me tough. You know, it, it put me in this point where like, I didn't, I didn't care what people said. I knew what I was going to do. And it just kept me motivated. You know, if this coach isn't going to help me, I'm going to help myself and I'm gonna go somewhere else. And then the cons were, I would see these players that, you know, we were equal or whatever, and they would get, you know, boosted up to this team and this team and because they had the support. And so there was kind of like that, yeah, the pros and cons to it for sure. Do you feel like that that has played in the last two years that that played a big part in like keeping you motivated? I would say so. I think it was, it kind of went both ways. I think the main reason I took a break was because I wanted, I kept telling myself I wanted to play overseas, but I really wanted to play in the professional league here in the US. 
And I, I, there were people that were playing in it that I either played against or with. And I was like, I know I could, I know I could beat them. I know I could play on that team, but I just was never given that opportunity no matter what I did. Um, so I feel like there was part of me that was like, you know what, maybe I just need to take a break from it and see if this is what I want to do um, and like regroup. And then I think at the same time now coming back that that's what's like relit my motivation even more is because I'm like, okay, I do want to do this. I want to put everything into this and I know what I'm capable of. So I feel like it's really kind of kickstarted my motivation as well. In college, like especially my sophomore, junior year, when we'd have some of these freshmen come in, you know, wherever they were from, they might've been the best on their team. They might've been the best in their county. I don't even know. But then they come here to this college team where, you know, it's a whole different world. And now they're kind of bottom of the barrel. And you see some of them that you're like, oh, this person was put through a lot and they rise up to the challenge. And you see some of them that they get benched their first game and they lose it because that they've never been benched before. And so it's kind of like a wake up call and, and some people rise to the occasion. I, I saw a lot of girls sadly just kind of fall and they never could pick it back up because it's, you know, it's how strong your confidence is. Is your confidence based off of, you know, your playing time or is your confidence based off of, you know, something inside that you know that you have. And you see some of them where, you know, they might get benched their first game and they're like, all right, next game, they'd be starting. And then you see other girls that they never started a single game because their confidence couldn't bounce back because they weren't getting the recognition that they needed to be confident. Um, and I think that was, you know, confidence has never really been something I've I've struggled with, especially as growing up in the soccer world, the way that I did, it was kind of something I had to have, or I would have quit years ago. Um, but, you know, I had teammates and I, I would try and help them with that because it's, it's a, it's a really, it's a game changer. Confidence is a game changer for sure. Definitely. What is it that actually makes that next level really the next level? I think I think the biggest thing that separates it is the accountability and the integrity and the work ethic outside of it. Um, obviously, when you're little, when you're younger, even up in high school, you have school, you have other things going on. College, you still have other things going on, but it's like it, the, you're more focused on the sport typically. But I think the biggest thing was, is, you know, all growing up, you do what you're assigned to do. You have practice, you have games. And then in college, you might have some weight training or some fitness. But I think the biggest thing that separates college and professional is that work that you put in outside of everything, the extra work, you know, focusing on your diet, focusing on drinking enough water, taking care of your body, all those things, because those little things are what make the difference. Yes, I would say from each level, everything is a little bit better, though, you know, the higher the level, the better their fitness and endurance is, their technical skills, their, um, you know, the size too. I mean, the difference between a 19 year old girl and a 24 year old woman is, is a big difference. It doesn't sound like much, but like in that professional year, you put on a lot of like good size and then you learn how to use your body. Um, so everything I think improves with the time and, you know, it, there's a higher standard, but I think that extra little key is the stuff that's done outside of all of it. And that's what, you know, that's what separates a professional player from an amateur player. I think one interesting part about athletics is that individual athlete, the balance between experience and um, the vitality of the athlete. And, and, you know, when a person comes in to, to a certain league and it's like, oh, wow, this person has the potential to be the next this person. You know, they have a great skill set. <clears throat> they have a great body. But they don't necessarily have, like, the, the experience of how to handle kind of like what you were talking about, the rigorous schedule, the outside – events that all the stuff that goes along with it 
do you feel like that you're that you've kind of maybe reached like a, a level of that prime level yet or you still feel like you're building how, like where do you feel like you are I feel like two years ago I was not quite at my prime but I think I was getting there and if COVID hadn't happened and things had gone the way that I anticipated them to go I think I would be there but I kind of took like two steps back and now I'm moving back forward and I think now with the time off having more like worldly experience I think bringing that back into it would would really get me there because just being folk hyper focused on one thing you kind of lose focus of everything else going on and there's so many other things that can contribute to what you're doing so I feel like I was so always for years focused on soccer and I had like little hobbies but taking time to really explore more in depth other hobbies and things like that and taking it back into soccer I think I think is what will get me to that point for sure it's like an undervalued thing almost to have the well-roundedness, you know, especially like this day and age where everything is like, if you're good at this, this is what you do. And if you're, you know, if you're not good at something, you just kind of throw it away, but like developing skills outside of that main skill, I think it really does. It it translates so well. And, And even like the lessons learned along the way, if you turn out not to be great at something, like you learn how not to be great. You learn that, you know, if you're sensing a certain thing, like those gut reactions become a little bit better. I would agree. I always thought that I was really well-rounded and I think my parents, or at least my mom really tried to push for that. I was good with academics. I was classically trained on the piano and I would do a lot of different things with music and I always like to try new things. So I always, I always thought that I was well-rounded and I think I was in comparison to how some people are. Um, but I think what really threw me off was, especially like when I would see my parents, friends or people I haven't seen for a little bit, they would always ask, how's soccer going? It wasn't like, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? You know, how are things? It was like, how's soccer going? And I, it, it used to not bother me. And then like when I was in college, it started getting to the point where I was like, I'm, I'm more than just a soccer player. And I think the biggest thing wasn't so much for me to feel well-rounded because I knew that I was, but it was to show that I'm well-rounded because my music always stayed behind closed doors. Like that was my thing. And I started modeling, but that kind of stayed on the side. And so really the only thing I showed to people was soccer and fitness. And so I think what I was showing to people was somebody that wasn't well-rounded And so rather than being a person, I felt like soccer player. Um, So I think with the break that I took, it allowed me to kind of go like a full 180 and be like, no, I'm not that. I'm all these things now. And so now I can kind of find that middle ground with it. Do you have like a five-year plan or whatever to call it? Like, okay, if I want to accomplish this in this, you know, these next couple of years. My first thing in my five-year plan, I guess, is this year, I think I'm going to just play semi-pro for a year to get back on a team, get into it. My goal is that next year, if I don't make a team in the U.S., that I'm playing another country. I just want to play professionally again and for the next few years, get back into all of that. I really want to, I really want to focus on turning social media into a business platform. I've kind of like teeter tottered with it and like sometimes I'm consistent and sometimes I'm not but my goal especially with us moving next month is to just make it like a a part-time job like turn it into a job where it's scheduled and really make something of it and then the other thing I really want to do in five years I've been wanting to start a swimwear line for like years I know I already have my like name and my logo and designs I just haven't really had the finances or the time and resources to start it, but that's something I really want to do that I'm really excited for. <laughs> that's cool. Do you have any advice for, you know, young athletes who who also want to kind of live the dream of being an athlete as a as a career? 
my advice is always just stay focused. Um, like the, the biggest advice I can give is don't listen to anything someone says unless it's helpful. Anything negative, not helpful criticism, but just criticism and negative things and talking down to you. Because coaches think that they're always right, um, but they miss a lot of things. So just staying focused and passionate about what you want and remember why you're doing it. Like, why am I playing? Because I want to do this. If you're just playing for fun and it's not fun anymore, then maybe it's time to move on. But if you're playing for a purpose of playing professionally or just playing to go to college and things like that, just stay focused on that ignore all the hate focus on all the you know helpful criticism you can get from people i've learned from probably 30 coaches and each one has given me something different and i think that's the most important thing i knew players that had one coach and it showed um so i think just getting that diversity and yeah just staying confident and passionate about what you love appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing some time here in the weight room. And if people want to uh, kind of follow what you're doing, where can they uh, where can they do that on social media? Instagram, the real Summer Mason, and really that's the only thing right now I'm I'm very active on. I want to get back into TikTok, YouTube, um, things like that. But Instagram, the real Summer Mason, is definitely the best place to find me. Thanks for having me. It's been awesome.